Hey, 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 Divas, you're listening to our daily devotion for the High Stepping for Health and Self-Love Sisterhood Challenge for the Divas of Fit, Fine, and Fabulous. And I am your host, Nicole Coach Twyde Twyman, and I'll be sharing 10 to 15 minute devotions every day during the month of September. Our goal is to motivate black and brown women to move their bodies and practice self-love all month long. So let's get started, sis. Welcome to day six, sis. We are all up in the mix. You should be so proud you are on your way to finishing your first full week of high stepping for your health all over your neighborhood and all up on the treadmill. We are getting it in. And on this Water Wasted Wednesday, we have the expressed opportunity to explore the concept of cravings. Yes, girl, God made us to crave, but some of us are craving more food, more alcohol, more material things. And I'm here acknowledging that sometimes we may crave food and drinks more than we crave a deeper connection with God. You know, during this first week of our journey together, it's been all about reminding ourselves of the importance of nurturing our spiritual hunger as much as our physical well-being. Well, today's verse gives us a water wasted Wednesday perspective. But before we get into it, let's recite today's affirmation together. Okay, I embrace the power of redirecting my cravings towards God. I am blessed when I hunger and thirst for righteousness. I find my deepest fulfillment in spending time nurturing my spiritual connection with the king of all kings. Hey man, I love that information and I hope you do too. Let's roll on into today's Bible verse. It comes from John chapter four, verses 13 through 14. And I am reading from the new King James version. It says, Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, but the water I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. I told you girls, it was all about water wasted Wednesday today. We were talking about the living water. But let's read the message translation to make it even more plain. John 4, 13 through 14 says, Jesus said, everyone who drinks this water will get thirsty again and again. Anyone who drinks the water I give will never thirst, not ever. The water I give will be an artesian spring within gushing fountains of endless life. Girl, in these verses, Jesus speaks, he's speaking to the Samaritan woman at the well, highlighting the distinction between physical and spiritual thirst. So here again, we're talking the difference between the physical body and the spiritual body and how they are completely separate and we should be nurturing them separately. It's a great example of that. When Jesus spoke to the woman at the well about the water, he was engaging in a deep and metaphorical conversation that carried profound spiritual significance. The whole conversation, you can find it in the Bible, like I said, in the Gospel of John, but specifically John 4, 7 through 26. Like read the whole thing. The verses I read today was just John 4, 13 and 14. But here's a summary of the key points and the meanings behind Jesus's conversation with the woman at the well. Jesus began asking the woman for a drink of water from the well, and that request initiated the whole conversation. He was like, can I get some water? As they talk, Jesus gradually shifted the focus from the physical thirst to the spiritual thirst. Jesus introduced the concept of living water that he could provide. He explained that whoever drinks of the water from the well will become thirsty again, but the water he offered would quench spiritual thirst permanently and lead to eternal life. 
The term living water was a metaphor for the spiritual refreshment, spiritual salvation, spiritual fulfillment that Jesus offers. It symbolizes the Holy Spirit and the transformative power of God's grace. Initially, the woman at the well misunderstood Jesus. She was thinking that he was talking about physical water. So she asked him, well, how could you provide this living water and you would even have a bucket? Right. And then Jesus continued to explain the spiritual dimensions of his message of his message. In the course of that conversation, Jesus revealed that he knew about the woman's past and all her struggles and all that she had going on, just as he knows about us, girl. He knows our past, right? So this revelation demonstrated his divine knowledge and helped her to recognize that he had he was more than just a regular man. Jesus told the woman that true worshipers worship God in spirit and in truth emphasizing the importance of a genuine heartfelt connection with God rather than merely observing rituals and traditions. As their conversation progressed, the woman began to grasp the spiritual depth of Jesus's words. She recognized him as a prophet and eventually came to believe that he might be the long awaited Messiah. Sis, Jesus basically used the metaphor of living water to engage the woman in a conversation about her spiritual needs right, and the eternal fulfillment that he could provide. He aimed to shift her focus from her temporal and physical concerns to matters of the heart, matters of the soul. This encounter ultimately led to her faith in him as the Messiah and brought about transformation in her life because she's choosing to focus on the spiritual and not just on the physical. Today, I want to help shift your perspective from thinking about the daily cravings and physical thirst that you might have to thinking more about what you really are craving and really are thirsting after. Could it be that your cravings for white bread is really your ultimate cravings for the bread of life? I mean, could it be that your thirst for alcohol, your thirst for sugary drinks, your thirst for all the coffee with the crema and the sugar is truly your ultimate thirst for that living water that only God can provide? Imagine you're the woman at the well. Imagine God trying to convince you that you're going about this all the wrong ways. Since you were made to crave, this is true. We were made to crave, but I hear God saying to us, we were all made to crave him and we have been misdirecting our cravings all along. So acknowledge that as human beings, we are made to crave more than just the physical sustenance. We have an innate craving for spiritual growth and love and a deeper purpose like God designed us this way. I want you to reflect on how redirecting your desires towards these profound longings that were in that are innate to you and put in you by God can lead to a more fulfilling life, seeking him first. So as you take your steps today, practice mindful choices, not only with food and whatever it is you're drinking today, but also your spiritual nourishment. Seek the living water that Jesus offers, the spiritual fulfillment that quenches our deepest thirst. Let today be a transformative day where you focus on nurturing both the physical and spiritual cravings that we have. And your prayer for yourself today, seek transformation in your desires. Ask God to guide you towards a balanced and fulfilling life where your physical and spiritual needs are both met. Pray for the wisdom to recognize that true fulfillment goes beyond physical cravings and include and include those for the spiritual. All right. On this Water Wasted Wednesday, let's remember that transformation begins within by redirecting our cravings from the shallow to the profound and seeking the living water of spiritual nourishment. 
we take a significant step towards holistic well-being, personal growth, and a life filled with deeper meaning. So sis, before we end today, I want us to repeat our affirmation of the day yet again. Repeat after me. I embrace the power of redirecting my cravings towards God. I am blessed when I hunger and thirst for righteousness. I find my deepest fulfillment in spending time nurturing my spiritual connection with the king of all kings. Sis, let us go to God in prayer together. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you with open hearts, acknowledging our cravings, acknowledging our thirsts. We recognize that by your divine design, we are made to crave more than just the physical sustenance. We were made to crave you, Lord, the bread of life and the living water that quenches our deepest spiritual thirst. Today, Lord, we ask for your guidance and wisdom as we seek to redirect our desires from the shallow to the profound. Help us make mindful choices, not only with what we eat and drink, but also how we nourish our souls. Maybe may we be full of your bread of life and our thirst quenched by your living water. We need your spiritual fulfillment, God, the only one that leads to everlasting life. Transform our cravings, O Lord, O Lord, and lead us on a path of deeper meaning, holistic well-being, and personal growth. As we continue this journey of high stepping for our health, let our ultimate craving be for a closer walk with you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say together, Amen. Sis, it is with a heart set on transformation, set on redirecting cravings, and a serious commitment to self-love that I am grateful for your listening ear today and hope today's message blessed you as much as it blessed me. Until tomorrow, divas, have a fit, fine, and fabulous day. Hey guys, thanks for listening to our Fit, Fine, and Fabulous devotion today. We're so glad that you're here with us. If you've completed all of your steps for the day, make sure you post your selfie in our Fit, Fine, and Fabulous Facebook group and mark this lesson complete in our app. If you're not a part of this challenge but want free motivation, just join us in our Facebook group, Fit, Fine, and Fabulous. That's Fit, Fine with a Y, F. Y N E fabulous or follow us on Instagram at fit underscore fine underscore fab. Can't wait to connect with you.